All right, we got day three in the shop. Won't be out here for very long, but uh, got the parts washer all cleaned out. It had about an inch of sludge in the bottom of it. So I got all that cleaned out. And the blue bucket, I'm gonna strain the rest of the fluid out of it. And I measured and it's gonna fit back here just fine. Uh, the second set of shelves, <clears throat> if I end up getting them, I'll have to rethink where to put the parts washer. But for now, it's gonna reside here. And I am going to do my level best to find other homes for all this stuff so that I can get to the parts washer easily. Uh, one of the biggest Achilles heels in this whole thing was the, the two small workbenches. This workbench, and then there was another one that was about double the depth. Uh, found a home for the other one. Didn't have any problems finding a home for it. And move this one over here. So that gives us ample room over there to do with what we please. Now I had talked about getting a second shelf unit. I still want to do that. How I'm going to go about it uh, is yet to be seen. I may just set the second one starting here and run it down that way. Lord knows I'd love to get all of this stuff uh, a little better organized than what it is right now. So what better way if I put a shelving unit up there I wouldn't be able to get to all this stuff here so all that stuff would have to go on the shelving unit and it would free up uh, a good bit of that wall but that's a pretty monumental undertaking there's a lot there um, I went through and I popped off the little um, diffusers or magnifiers whatever you call them on the blue lights so that all I have are, where's the switch at? Hello switch, there you are. All I have is just the white lights. <clears throat> I know it looks kind of funny, but I've got plenty of light there. Um, just ran a triple tap off of an extension cord uh, for now so I can get the parts washer plugged in. And I've had people ask in the past, what do I use for parts washer fluid? Well, that's one item that I use right there is diesel and then the other item that I use is right there mineral spirits mineral spirits and diesel that's all I use uh, yes I always wear gloves when I'm doing it so don't freak out about that but boy that's a lot of yummy junky gunk there but on the plus side I found zero lost parts down here, which didn't happen the last time I cleaned it out. So, I guess that's a good thing, right? Um, this is just a little repurposed. It was a, an outside um, chairside table. And cut it up, bent it up, cut the legs off, and repurposed it as my elevation. And then that material there is actually stainless. And uh, I acquired that from my buddy Jeff quite some years ago. So I just formed it around and it's worked marvelously. And then my small parts is actually just a uh, grass catcher screen from a Briggs engine. So all my little parts just get trapped on that and don't end up down in the drink. So whatever works, use what you bring, right? Um, and that oil pan it had been sitting in there for quite some time. Uh, it'll get hung up over there the, where those five are hanging. So then I'll have six. But other than that, we're just plugging along. So as soon as I get this moved over there and get everything strained, there's my strainer. So I can strain all the big chunks out. Well, this is a passive kind of a waste pump type of deal, so it will pick the junk up and spit it out too. The only problem is it can come down to the end and clog the brush. So, uh, fortunately, I've not had that problem with it as of late. I did early on, but uh, anyway, let me get that stuff drained out of there. I'll dump the solution back in after I get the parts washer moved back over there and get it all hooked up. And then we'll turn the camera back on. Hang on. Technology is awesome, but you've got to learn how to do it right. <laughs> I just spent the last, I don't know, four minutes 
talking to a camera that was not recording. Ah, the joys of being a tuber. Uh, I had wireless remote lights in here before and the remotes went bad on them so I abandoned them for about a year and I decided yesterday Ms. Zippo and I went out and went to a uh, big box store hardware store to go ahead and give these guys a try they're made by Woods and you can see here we've got an A, B, C and a D where you can switch channels and then within each channel you have three options so depending you, you get the plug in and then a has one two three options so on and so forth and you can plug multiple into a single channel so i'm going to show you guys here that um these lights over here light strip over there or i'm sorry yeah and this light strip here are all on one So there is one receiver on each of those three light strips um, and they're all set to the same program key on this so I could get up I, you can I could add up to nine of these and operate them all independently depending on the uh, button that I push and before I close out I do want to thank uh, Mr. Willie CK very much I and apologize that I didn't pop the camera on but if you look right there that bottle opener came compliments of Willie CK uh, so thank you very very much Willie then I found this four in one patented September 13th of 1910 uh, I found this yesterday just on or Saturday on our travels uh, made by the JC Forster and Son in Pittsburgh, PA. Uh, it's a four-in-one jar, bottle, can, opener. Very unique. Not one that I've ever seen before. And the funny thing was in that antique store, there were two in two different uh, sellers sections. So it was kind of crazy. But anyway, now I am recording and that was pretty much all i said in the first take where i didn't hit the record button so i'm going to commence to doing what i said in the first part of the video and i'll see you guys when that parts washer makes its way over there all right wasn't a big deal we got it over here and i'm not leaking so that's a good thing put my hanger back up just put it on the beam here that just holds the lid up for me. Nice good flow. Added about three gallon of fluid into it. And I'm actually going to go ahead and just put it to work. Because uh, while I'm doing everything I'm doing, I'm also cleaning up any engines that need cleaned. And this one, this Vanguard here obviously does need cleaned. I don't think you guys have ever seen or heard this one run, have you? I don't believe you have. I may uh, relocate that cooler for just a short spell. Stick this engine on there and start it. Since I did an engine start on the last one, we'll just try to do that on each one of these little shop videos that we're doing here. Because you know, it, it's not going to move quickly. It's going to happen, but you know, repairs are still coming in and stuff. So I still have to stay to where. I can still work on stuff but uh, let's get that engine well I suppose we could just stick it up here instead of worrying about that that's a sturdy enough table we'll do that we'll get it set up there put a fuel line to it pop the muffler on so it won't deafen us and uh, give that one a start so hang on well she ain't pretty is she <laughs> All right, let's see what we got. I already checked the oil. Uh, primed the fuel. I just pressurized the gas tank. Uh, let's see if she's going to start. Start a solenoid sitting on it. I don't know if I'll need choke or not. We'll find out. Come 
might need a little choke. I'm dropping stuff all over everywhere. <laughs> Hang on. Hmm. I suppose I could just come over here and pull the trigger with the hand I'm holding the GoPro with. Get some choke. so smooth and so quiet that's impressive I mean I've heard quiet Vanguard that's yeah you know, it's just but wow that surprised me that that was as quiet as it was uh, well I'll let it cool down a bit and I'm gonna go put it in the parts washer and slap some of the dirty off of it I'll just leave it assembled for now just do a quick cleaning but wow I'm impressed all right gang well that does it. This is your friendly neighborhood Zippo. It is noon according to all of the clocks and uh, about time for me to eat some lunch. So I'm going to eat some lunch then I'll come back out and we'll stick that thing in the parts washer and get it cleaned up and I'll pop the camera back on real quick just to give the engine a photo op after a little bath. And then we'll call it quits. Later. I'm out of here. Alright. Made a little bit of a mess. I got started on it. Uh, I'm not done, but what well, barely fit in there. But it did. Love this big parts washer. Well, that red's kind of popping now. All I did was just brushed it a little bit. Uh, all that will come off. But, I don't know, what's that? Is that like dressing a pig? Is that what they call it? Boy, those are good engines. I really like those engines. <clears throat> Again, it's a 1999, so it's a 21-year-old engine that runs as well as it does. Uh, not sure how many hours are on it or anything like that, but it doesn't really matter. As long as you take care of them, they'll last forever. That's it. This is your friendly neighborhood Zippo. We've got this part of the uh, little shop turnaround taken care of. Made me a little mess here, and we'll have to get a mat down there. But that's uh, going to wrap it up for another edition of the shop. Still a long ways to go, but every little bit counts, right? All right. I'll see you guys on the next one. Don't forget, 
be part of the solution, not the problem. Hit that subscribe button for me. Thanks. Later. Out.